Hello students! In this video, we are going to do a little more of reviewing. We are going to review sentence structures very quickly and look at how we use prepositions in these different structures. Let's start with this page. Let's do a very quick review of using prepositional phrases with the different sentence structures. Look here at sentence structure number one. When we use a linking verb, after the linking verb, we normally use a complement. And after the complement, you can use a prepositional phrase if you want to. But I also want to show you that sometimes sentence structure one, especially when we use the verb be, sometimes the complement is not there. So let's look at these two examples. The first one, Martha is a student at Laney College. So let's analyze this sentence. Let's identify the parts. Martha is my subject. Is is my linking verb be. After is, I can see a student. This is a noun, so that is my complement in my sentence. After the complement, I can use my prepositional phrase at the end, or I can use my prepositional phrase at the beginning, then put a comma to separate the subject. After the subject, use my linking verb and then my complement. So in this example, both are correct. You can use the preposition at the end or at the beginning. But now look at this, this new example, this new sentence. It's a little different. Look at the parts of speech. Martha, subject. Again, we have the verb be, okay, my link, we have the verb be, the linking verb. After the verb be, no complement, only a prepositional phrase. Because the prepositional phrase is directly after the verb be, I cannot use the prepositional phrase in the front. I cannot because we don't have a complement. So if I try to, I can say something like at Laney, Martha is, but that is incorrect. It's not correct because we cannot finish a sentence with a linking verb. That is not how it works. So when you do not have a complement, when you don't have a complement in your sentence, the prepositional phrase must be at the end. Okay, let's look at sentence structure number two. Remember, sentence structure number two is using transitive verbs because we have a direct object after. So let's look at the first example. My teacher helped me understand verbs in our last class. My teacher subject helped is my verb and it's a transitive verb because I can see my indirect object and then my direct object. After that, I can see I have my prepositional phrase after. Or I can use the prepositional phrase at the beginning with a comma to separate the prepositional phrase from my subject. In sentence number three with intransitive verbs, same thing. You can use subject plus intransitive verb plus prepositional phrase. Or you start with the prepositional phrase, use a comma, then do the subject and intransitive verb. Okay, so you can see here that in all three sentence structures, you can use the prepositional phrase at the end of the sentence or at the beginning of the sentence. The only time you cannot use it at the beginning is when you do not have a complement. Okay, so now let's just review a little bit more about prepositions and the difference between some of these prepositions. So now let's start by making sure you understand the differences between the prepositions of place. So here there are 12 different prepositions of place that you will learn in this class. You can learn more if you want, but only these are necessary. I'm not going to explain all of these, but I want to focus on some that are similar, but not the same. So it's important that you understand the differences between them. Let's look at number one and number two. 
Number one is in. In. In is when we, is like saying inside of a place. So in is inside of a room, for example, inside of a building, inside of a house. That is what we use in. So look at this example here. The car is in the garage. The garage is something that can be closed. So we, that's why we use in to say inside this room because the room can be closed. So in is the best place for this. Look here. The student is in the classroom in the classroom, inside this room, inside this place. But at, at is very different. At is not inside of a room. It is just a general place. It means around that place. So for example, when we say something like the, the student is at school, at school, I don't know where at school. I don't know if the student is in the parking lot or in a classroom or in an office in a bathroom i don't know where the student is i know the student is around school close to school so in the general area of school so in is for inside places at is for general places around that area Okay, on and on top of, on and on top of are the same. They have the same meaning, but you can use either. Okay, on means it is touching. So the milk is on, on top of the table. It's touching the table. All right, uh, the next one I want to take a look at is this one here, number eight. When you use between, you need to use a noun after between and, and then another noun after. So look at the example. Mike's watch, so we're talking about the watch. Where is the watch? Between a noun, the lamp, and a second noun, the book. So between the lamp and the book is where the watch is. So when you use between, you use between plus noun, plus and, plus noun. So let's do a little bit of practice. When we want to know the location, the preposition of place about something, we ask questions with where, where. When we start the question with where, it means that the answer is a location. So look at this question here. Where are your shoes? We can use sentence structure one. My shoes are, so subject, linking verb, and then a prepositional phrase. So you can use sentence structure one to answer the question, or you can use sentence structure two. I, subject, keep, transitive verb, keep what? My shoes, direct object, where? Prepositional phrase, under my bed. So when we ask where, you want to give the location. So here you have 10 different questions that I want you to practice asking and answering. For example, where is your bed? You can say, my bed is in my bedroom. My bed is in front of the dresser. Okay, so please pause the video here, write down these 10 questions and try answering these 10 questions using different prepositions of place. If you need help, use pages 56 and 57 in your book. Here are some example answers. Please pause the video here to see some possible answers. You can have other answers, that is okay, but here are just some examples that you can study from. Okay, now let's do a little bit of practice with prepositions of time. In this class, I want you to practice with four different prepositions of time. In is used for time of day or time of year. On is used for days, days of the week, weekends because days like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and dates like holidays. Okay, at, at is for time, time, specific time like midnight, noon, 7.30, 8. And we also use it for nighttime. 
For periods of day, usually we use in, like in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Only night, we say at night, at night. And then we also have from plus a noun to plus a noun. This is to talk about the start time and the end time. So you can say from a day to a day, like from Monday to Thursday, or you can use time like from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Okay, so these are four different prepositions of time with different examples for you to study from. Now let's do a little bit of practice with using prepositions of time. Look at these questions. When, when do you study? When, when we use a, this word, when, at the beginning of a question, it's because the answer is time time or days. So look at these questions here. When do you study? I study. And then we have a prepositional phrase. So this here is sentence structure number three. I plus intransitive verb plus prepositional phrase. So weekend, right? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we use on. Or if you want to use a time of day, like evening or morning or afternoon, you use in. If the question is what time, what time, that means that you need to answer using at because time or from to with time. So when we ask what time do you study, you can answer I study at 9 a.m. or I study from 8 to 10. When we ask when, you want to answer using in or at or on. You can even answer from to. So with when, you can answer with all four prepositions, but what time, because we're asking about time, no day, we're asking about time, you need to answer using at or from to. So I want you to please pause the video here and practice asking yourself and answering these questions here. If you need help, you can use pages 63 and 64 in your book. Let's check the answers. Here are some possible answers. Maybe your answers are a little different. That is okay. Pause the video here to study how you can answer these questions. Let's look at number one together. I work, I work, I, subject plus intransitive verb. Then I have my prepositional phrase. And here, look, two prepositional phrases. At seven, in the morning two prepositional phrases. If you don't want to say in the morning, you can just say 7 a.m. It's the same information. If I use a day, like weekend time, I need to use on. So again, please pause the video here to study how to use prepositions of time to answer these questions. Okay, very good. So let's review. What did we learn? Prepositions are just one or two words. A prepositional phrase is when we have a preposition plus the object. And we can add the prepositional phrase to any sentence structure because it gives extra information like time or place. You can use it at the beginning or at the end of a sentence. Just make sure that if you use it at the beginning, you use a comma. Thanks for watching.